Hello, my name is Kerry Kolosko, and I'll be talking about creative visualizations in Power BI. I'll be talking about what is creativity and what creativity is in data visualization, how we can think creatively, and I'll have demonstrations of tools that can enable us to build creative visualizations in Power BI. So what is creativity? Creativity is a broad term. Its usage and meaning has evolved and morphed over time. The term is used in several ways to describe a set of processes, creative thinking, creative problem solving, the personal characteristics of people, the creative personality type, and results. Creating new products on a production line that are unlike is not creative. Creating new products that have more purpose is also not considered creative. Whereas creating new and different products not seen before that provide a genuine solution to a problem is considered creative. So we can think of creativity as the process of generating novel and useful ideas, or the production of relevant and effective novelty. And I'll be using that a lot throughout the presentation, the production of relevant and effective novelty. There's distinction among levels of creativity too, so we can have the inventive versus innovative, a different application of the already known versus development of new principles. Highly original ideas are important, but sometimes the greatest test of creativity is taking an existing idea and giving it a new use of life. There's also distinction between art and creativity. What's comforting to know is that creative PABIA reports need not be artistic. So why is it important? Creativity, as we all know, leads to innovation, societal or technological progress. We know that creative solutions are noticeable and they're memorable, and they may potentially be more efficient and effective than current practices. Creativity also stems boredom from the practitioner's perspective. Creativity is creating new chart types. Here we can see a word cloud created in 2005, bullet chart created in 2006, chord diagram created in 2007, rain cloud plot in 2018. Creativity is taking the old and rearranging them into new ways. Here with the rain cloud plot, we've got the old charts such as half a violin plot, the density plot, alongside a box plot and a jitter scatter plot. So we've got old themes rearranged in new ways. Here we're taking the old and rearranging them into original ways. Taking the old and combining them in original ways. And creativity is daring to be different. If the novelty is not effective, or a data viz is not intelligible, then it is art. But should we always strive to be creative with data viz? It's not always necessary to be creative. In our current landscape where everything's bright, colourful, animated, and everything's competing for our attention, sometimes simple minimalism is just what the doctor ordered. If we're creating financial reports where accuracy is key for decision making and justification, then following best practice, tried and tested methods, going with visuals that are more familiar is probably a good idea. But if exploring data, understanding relationships and making inferences, creating explanatory reports with engaging informational type visualizations, or getting the gist of something is okay, then it's safer to be experimental. In order to inspire creativity, we first need to understand what it is that inhibits it. One of these things can be design fixation. Design fixation occurs when designers adhere steadfastly to a set of ideas that limit creative outcomes. So for example, giving students a design problem and then showing them an existing solution can limit their creative outputs. A study into experiences and perspectives of practitioners uncovered some key contributors to design fixation. 
The first one being um, quite a big one for me, I find is chart recommendations. So the existence of chart recommendations from software can promote adherence to a design idea and limit your creative thing. Other things that also contribute being too focused on details and not the big picture can result in fixation. The amount of effort required for creativity and design can be off-putting and quite discouraging. The role of prior experiences and existing practices or habits, for example, having solved some problems previously or people getting stuck in rigid best practices and seeing it as having to do things in a certain way. Another thing as well is precedent, so whereby people are influenced by prior visualization designs. And lastly, Fairly importantly as well is client stakeholder influence. So clients changing their minds, sharing their own, own ideas about the design and having to adhere to things like brand guidelines. On the flip side, there are a number of ways to promote creativity. Some of these being incubation, putting this problem aside for a while, experimenting, brainstorming, what if postulations garnering inspiration from existing visualizations, art, nature, and environment, seeking feedback, initiating discussions, and changing perspective. So it's deliberately thinking in a different way. I will be focusing on inspiration in this presentation. So what do I need to be creative? Here I've highlighted four things that have come out of studies into creativity inherent ability, intrinsic motivation, and the two that I'm really going to be focusing on for the rest of the presentation, knowledge and boldness. So inherent ability describes our baseline levels of creativity, which are largely set by the time we reach out mode. They come down to personality traits, such as intellectual curiosity, openness to experience and unconventionality. Our creative abilities can still be nurtured with training over periods of time. Intrinsic motivation is the desire to engage in creative activities for the sake of the activity itself and not in the hope of obtaining external rewards. Being creative for creativity's sake. Extrinsic motivation, which is the opposite of intrinsic motivation, which is the seeking of external rewards, can inhibit creativity as people shape their behaviours and thinking for rewards such as praise, recognition and promotional opportunities. If they are designing with promotional opportunities in mind, that will limit their thoughts and outputs. Other creative motives include playful motives and expressive motives. Creating games, fun, alternate visuals and power BI is a great way to flex those creative muscles and skills. No, knowledge. So without expertise or task relevant skills, we can't produce anything creative. Expertise is not enough alone, it's not enough to master the elements, we also have to rearrange them into original ways. Learn the basics before we can break the rules. And boldness. So creativity requires doing things differently from the way they're usually done, defying the norms. Sometimes we call that contrarianism. It's also the readiness to expose oneself to being wrong and open to critique is really important to creativity. So the key to Creativity is being brave, trying new things, and learning from mistakes. So what do I need to know to be creative? The quote here, I should mention before, so it's good to learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. To be creative, we need to have that knowledge, so we need to understand our data and our case types, so the differences between quantitative and qualitative data. We need to understand the context. So starting a visualization without clarifying why it matters to the audience before we start is a recipe for failure. Um, it helps to have a memory of the building box of data visuals too. So data binding and data encoding methods and an understanding of the C of each. Also an understanding of the foundations of visual perception, such as just up principles, pre-attentive and attentive attributes and understanding our tool, right? So we've got to master our tool and know how to work it with as much depth as necessary. So I have to know it inside and out, but enough. 